My guest tonight needs no introduction. Benjamin Dube is a South African music legend, a songwriter, singer, and music producer who has for Where over 35 years go, blessed and inspired many across the if world. If you leave me now, what must I do? Tonight, and Bishop Dube joins me for a very intimate conversation about his work with Christ Please and the man that is behind the spotlight tonight on Chimstock Africa. Don't but before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Magadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of Chim Stock Africa. I'm your host, Chim Oyebilama. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to share with you my conversation with the legendary Bishop Dube. But before we do that, I want to take us to go into our segment called Teaching Time. Thank you, Chim. Yes. Jesus paid the price for the redemption of our soul. The redemption of the Christian did not come cheap. Even when we talk about of Christianity as something that is free because it is by grace, it does not come cheap. It cost a lot. Not in silver and gold, not in money, not in anything that this world can give, not in power, political power, not in the glory of the world, but there's a price more than all this. What price did Jesus pay? Firstly, Jesus came down. He left glory in heaven and he came down on the earth. He condescended. He made himself vulnerable, accessible to Satan, to temptation, to suffering. Things that could not have had access to him had he stayed in his normal glory. Also, Jesus paid the price by making him, by, by bearing the suffering. Yes, he suffered. He was injured. In fact, when God was predicting what was going to happen, he said, though Jesus was going to crush the head of the devil, the devil would enjoy his hair. Jesus suffered just to redeem our souls. He was considered an ordinary animal. Jesus paid the price. He paid the price that the world could not have paid. We are told also an aspect of the suffering that he bore. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made a curse for us. For it is written, caused is everyone that hangs on a tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Yes, he became a curse. He was caused for us to be blessed, for your soul to be redeemed. Jesus are to become a curse. It was not just that he was caused. He became a curse. That was a price he paid. And that was why, that was, it was after he paid that price that the glorious blessings that we find in the scriptures that we love to claim became ours. 
if Jesus did not become a curse, we could not have been blessed. No matter who would have prayed for you, for you to be blessed, without the price that Jesus paid by being a curse, you could not have been blessed. If Jesus did not become a curse, all those promises of God that we read of in the Bible, you could not have had access to any one of them. But we thank God that Jesus paid the price by being made a curse. Another aspect of the price that he paid, we are told that he tasted death for us. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 says, But we see Jesus, who, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. Yes. Crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God, he should taste death for every man. He came, he tasted death for us. His death was considered as the priest of those days that carried the blood of animals into the holy place. But it just happened that in his own case, he did not carry the blood of animals. He carried his own blood to the holy place for our redemption. He gave his life as a ransom. That was the price that Jesus paid. He gave his life as a ransom. And I read Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. What price did Jesus pay? He gave his life, the whole of his life, as a ransom for you. Can you ask God to save your soul because he has already paid for your soul? Can you say to him that you give him your life so that you can be counted among those that were bought by the blood of Jesus? God bless you. Thanks, Pade. On the back of that teaching by Pade, if you feel that you need to give your life to Christ, if you feel that God is touching you and you need to repent at this time, I want to encourage you to do so. And I want to encourage you to contact us because I want to send you some ebooks that will really help you with this. If this is what you want to do and you want to give your heart to Jesus and you want to repent, please contact me by the numbers on the screen and we'll be rushing to you this ebooks that will help you in your walk with Christ and help you to really thrive in him. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's go to that my interview with the legendary Benjamin Dube. Don't go away. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to this segment of your show. Like I said in the intro, my guest today needs no introduction. It's none other than the multi award winner, legendary gospel artist, Bishop ben Benjamin Dube. You're welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be with you. And uh, thanks even to all your uh, uh, viewers and, and listeners. God bless you. It's just preparing you for this. I spent time watching many of your. Uh, live concerts yes. and the thing that strikes me it's the it's the spirit of worship yes it's i said to myself there's an anointing to bring the presence of god in this man's ministry and i i don't say that lightly mm -hmm. i'm talking about mm -hmm. the the fact that there is you're not just singing it's not about a gifting it's about an anointing to bring 
the presence of God. You must have known this. How did you get here? Now? How did you just talk a bit about that? Men of God, what I can actually clearly say to you is that God delivered me from the spirit of, uh, of entertainment and delivered me from the spirit of, uh, of uh, uh, becoming uh, a popular and famous and a uh, spirit of being an artist and all that. Um, he dealt with my name. I remember there was a time where God said, you are, he, he spoke to me, uh, when you have a relationship with God, you know the voice of God from the voice of men. And he said to me, you are a false worshiper. Mm. And I said, I know of false prophets, but I've never heard of a false worshiper. And God said to me, you actually are not worshiping me. You are gathering praise for yourself. Mm. And in my name, you are doing it. And God said to me, uh, I demand that you come out of uh, the crowds. Come out of the crowds. If you can worship me in seclusion, mm. you can worship me anywhere hallelujah and 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 my understanding uh, of that god was actually saying stop entertaining people and because you were not designed to be the entertainer of men mm. and but you have been designed and I have assigned you and mm. called you to be the entertainer of one. Mm. Hallelujah. And he said, you are supposed to entertain me. And he said, if you can uh, uh, have me, then I will bring you to all men. Mm. I remember in 1992 and God dealt with me and he said, I cannot use you mm -hmm. the way I want to use mm -hmm. you until you renounce your name. Oh, and I said, but why, what's wrong with my name? And he said, when I use you, you will think it's because of your name. God actually uh, set me aside, isolated me, and I was in, Bi in, in Zoe Bible Church for three mm. years. There was no invitation. Oh. There was no uh, company that wanted to sign me to, to record. All the companies were saying, no, Benjamin is, is, not, a good, is, a, is not a good seller. His time is gone. He, he, in other words, he's not a... a, a, a marketable. A, yeah, marketable <laughs> name, you know, and all that. For three years, God shut me down. Three years, I was in the church, and I was a, a music director. Mm. In the church, mm. no invitations, <laughs> no concerts, no festival. No one was interested in Benjamin Dube. And he said, do you agree that I use you? And I said, well, I have nothing to lose <laughs> because for three years, oh nothing is happening. I tell you, man of God, I was so frustrated and I said, Lord, um, okay, okay, let your will be done. done. And from then on, when I gave in to God, when I said yes, yes. to God, doors flung open. About three months later, I got a call from Sweden, a man I never met. And he said, are you Benjamin Dube? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, I've heard about you. And he said, can you prepare yourself? I need you to travel and to tour with me, Sweden and Norway. Put together your singers, and I'm going to pay everything. everything. <laughs> and you are going to be with me for 11 days on the road. 
somebody who never met, who, who never met me, somebody who has heard. And then God said, I can do what no one can do. I can market you without anybody knowing you. Uh, it's difficult to, to, to listen to you as you lead worship, to listen to your songs without seeing the weight of the meanings in them. Just there's a lot of meaning. And now with all of this explanation, one can immediately see mm -hmm. this is not songs that are coming from, let's sing a song. It's, it's a journey. It's a man's journey with God, a man who's gone through different things. Yes. There's a particular song I want us to talk about. It's from your, it's uh, Worship in His Presence, that the album, Worship in His Presence uh, album and the song, I Will Rise Again. Yes. Tell us about the, the inspiration of this. Where, what's, what happened in your life? Where did this, it's, there's something heavy about the song. Um, uh, now that, that is a very personal song. When I actually wrote it, I was going through a very difficult time, uh, and uh, which was a very personal um, a challenge in my life. Um, when God, even as I reiterated the issue of God assigning me and calling me for ministry, I got into a, a point where uh, I established a church mm. and uh, uh, the church uh, I founded the church and my brother actually joined me and I didn't have any uh, mentorship at the time and I was married at the mm. time and I had one uh, boy at the time uh, and uh, then challenges began mm. I spent more time in uh, the work of the ministry, more than I did with my family. Mm. And I would actually um, even go and visit uh, uh, the, uh, the congregants and things like that. And I would come late, you know, and to a point where uh, I realized that there is a gap between me and my family. Mm. But I, I ran with the fact that I'm doing the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. Yes, I'm serving the Lord. And I'm doing the Lord's work to a point where sometimes when there were issues between me and my wife, mm. and I would take the side of the church, mm. and I would say, but we are doing the work mm. of the Lord. But little did I know that the enemy was creeping in. And uh, uh, to a point where I was now giving in to the people mm -hmm. more than I was giving in to the Lord. And my wife said to me the other time, uh, but is the church God? Mm -hmm. you, by the look of things, you look at the church as the first priority in your life. And we are left behind. And uh, I kept on and kept on and, and, and said, yeah, it's, it's because you, you were not called. You were not given the assignment and, and all that. And it got to a point where there was a break mm. between me and my wife. Mm. And uh, one morning, now this Happened for a long time. Yeah. It was, it was just like, snowballing. Yes, like three years mm, in the ministry. Mm. And one morning, uh, we woke up and she woke up and she said to me, uh, I want a divorce. Mm. And I said, a divorce? This was like lights on for mm. me. So this thing is serious. Um... And she said, I've had enough. I'm not prioritized mm. in this relationship. And, and you are not covering me. You are mm. not uh, mm. protecting me. Mm. Even whenever there are problems that, that affect me, mm. you, you don't stand with me. Mm. You actually take other people's side, side and uh, publicly so, which I did. 
and in the name of the Lord. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Little did I know that it was eating her up. And, uh, and I said, but divorce is not mm -hmm. the issue, it's mm -hmm. not the solution. Mm -hmm. And in my family, there has never been a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anything mm -hmm. about this thing. Mm -hmm. And she said, I need mm -hmm. to be happy mm -hmm. and I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And, and she went on and she, she then um, uh, uh, filed for divorce. And God did reveal this to me. And he's, he kept on saying to me, get your house in order. Wow. Those were the words. And he said, get your house in order. I didn't listen. Mm. And I kept on up until that time. Mm -hmm. And I remember when that happened, um, and I saw my wrong, it was too late for me mm. to remedy the situation. Then I wrote a song uh, that says, where will I go if you leave me now? What must I do? What will I say? And I said, please don't go. Don't leave me alone. I've done you wrong, but I'll make it up to you. Cause I'll rise again. Mm. And that was resonating in my heart. And I was like saying, I'm begging you. Mm. Don't leave me. Mm. I know that I've, I've done you wrong mm. and I've actually messed you up, mm. but I'm willing mm. to rectify, mm. you know. And uh, the, second, the second verse says, uh, when times are rough and no one around, what must I do when you're not there? Now talking to God, mm. please show me, show me the way. I cannot see my way back to you. And that's how I rise again. And I realized that if Jesus rose again on the third day, I know I will. Hmm. You know, I look at the fact how God has uh, helped you with your family. I look at your four sons. You must be so proud of this four, four boys. Yes. <laughs> three of your sons are, three of your sons are recording artists. They are, they have a ministry of their own. Uh, you must be a very proud dad. To talk to us about your sons. They are the ones that kept me going. And I said, Lord, if I don't do it for myself, I will do it for them. I will stay true to you. I remember I stayed for two full years at the feet of the cross. Mm. Midnight hour, mm. I would cry to God. Mm. I would hold my Bible. Mm. And I would say, I'm, you're the only one left for me. If I am to leave for anything, I gotta leave for you, mm -hmm. God, and my son. Mm -hmm. That, that kept me alive. Mm -hmm. It made me realize that you cannot live for people. Mm. The life that you have is from God and it is for God. Wow, that's so good. You know what? You've been such a blessing to us today. I've been talking to the legendary Benjamin Dube, as we know him all across Africa, the songs that have blessed us. But more than that today, he's just opened the veil to us to realize his intimacy with the Lord, his work with the Lord. Thank you so much for just this time you've had with us. Thank you so much. Thank Do you, you have a last word you want to say to our audience out there? Anything in your heart, even if for a few seconds? <laughs> yes, I, I, I would like to share, uh, you know, the scripture that says, time and chance is given to all men uh, or happens 
to all men. Um, life is time. Mm. So whatever time you've been given, use it profitably mm. and make sure that it actually uh, leaves a good legacy mm. for you and it will affect even those that will come after you and you will live in other people's lives after wow. you are gone. Wow, what a beautiful way to end this. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Bishop ben Benjamin Dube. And thank you so much too for joining us there where you're watching from. You would agree with me that this has been a blessed time. I would encourage you to find somewhere alone and just pray over some of the things you've received here because I was touched and I know you were touched as we listened to the story of this man of God who has worked with God all these years. Uh, this is where we draw the curtain. Thank you for joining us this week. Please do join us next week. Bye for now. Welcome back. I hope you were blessed by that. This is where we begin to wrap up for this week. Now, if this uh, show has been a blessing to you today, we want to encourage you to consider partnering with us. Your gifts and support to this ministry keeps us going and help us to continue to change lives all across Africa. And this month, we want to say thank you to every single person who would give a gift to us. For, for every gift that is given to this ministry this month, I want to give you a copy of my new book, uh, God Gives His Children a Song. This is a book that has blessed people all around the world. And we'll be sending a copy of this book to every single person who gives a gift towards the ministry this month. So use the contact on the screen and get in touch with us if you'd like to support us in any way. Thank you so much already. I would like to send you this book to say thank you to you. God bless you. Now, this is where we wrap up this week. I'll see you next week. Same station, same time. God bless you and bye-bye for now. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else.